So next we're going to look at some contextual examples of these involving engineering equations. Okay, one such equation is an equation of motion that states that final velocity v equals initial velocity u plus acceleration times time. v equals u plus at. Now you'll probably observe that that is of a very similar format to the equations that you've just been working on in the previous tutorial. Now one of the things that you may be asked to do is to calculate time t for given variables. So a typical question might give you the final velocity of a vehicle, it might give you the initial velocity of a vehicle, it might tell you how quickly that vehicle is accelerating and ask you to calculate the time to change velocity from the initial to the final velocity. That would be a typical type of question. And what that would involve you doing is finding t, time t. So to rearrange this for t, the first thing that we would need to do is strip away everything that doesn't contain the t. And I'm sure you can see from inspection that what we're referring to here is the u. So the first thing we would need to do to get rid of the u, or to strip the u away from the right hand side, is minus u from each side of the equation. Although these don't have values, we perform the functions in exactly the same way. So we would subtract u from each side, which would give us v minus u on the left-hand side. And we would subtract u from the right-hand side. Well, u minus u would just cancel each other out. So our right-hand side is just going to become at. Now we've got v minus u equals at. We want t on its own. So we need to divide each side of that equation by a, because what we've got at the moment is a times t, and we just want t on its own. So we're going to divide by a each side, and what we'll be left with is v minus u, all divided by a. So typically you would put that in brackets, v minus u over a equals t, or t equals v minus u over a. What you could then do is plug in your values for v, u and a and that would enable you to determine the time t. Okay, next we'll take an electrical example. There's an equation for electrical power which states that power equals current squared times resistance. This is the power dissipated in a resistor. And what the question might give you is the amount of power that's being dissipated and it might ask for the current through a given resistor for that amount of power to be dissipated. So what we would need to do is rearrange that equation for the current I. Okay, Once again we've got I but it's tied up in an expression and we've got I squared times R. So the first thing we would need to do if we wanted to get I squared on its own is divide each side of that equation through by R. So we divide by r, and we divide r each side. Okay, so the left-hand side of our equation is going to become p divided by r. Okay, we don't know the value of that. We don't need to. We're working with the, the letters that represent the numbers. And i squared times r divided by r means the r is going to disappear, and we'll be left with i squared. Now what you can see here is the thing that we're trying to get on its own, i, is now being squared or raised to the power 2. So we need the inverse function of squaring, which is square rooting. And we're going to square root each side of our equation. Just take a little bit of care here because what we're doing is we're taking the square root for the left hand side of p divided by r. So we need to keep p divided by r in brackets p divided by r was already there and we're square rooting all of that. And if we square root the right hand side, i squared, square rooted, is just going to leave us i, or i equals the square root of p divided by r. I'm just going to show you one more example and we're going to go back to our equations of motion. We've got an equation of motion that says v squared equals u squared plus 2a s. Okay, v is the final velocity, u is the initial velocity, 2 is just a constant, a is the acceleration, and s is the displacement or the distance travelled. 
Now a question might ask you to rearrange that equation to make s the subject. It might want you to calculate the distance travelled when we're given the final velocity, initial velocity and acceleration. So what is the distance travelled when this acceleration is taking place? So to rearrange this, this expression here contains the thing we're trying to find. So the first thing we need to do is strip away everything that doesn't contain the thing that we're trying to find, that doesn't contain the s. So the first function we're going to perform to get rid of the u squared is we're going to subtract u squared from each side of that equation. Okay, so our left hand side is going to become v squared minus u squared. We've just subtracted u squared from it. And our right hand side is just going to remain as 2as. So we're now a step closer to getting s on its own. The next step then, if we're trying to get s on its own, at the moment we've got 2 times a times s. What we can do is group the 2 times a, because all it is is a number that if we were given the acceleration of 5, then 2 times the acceleration is just 10. It's still just a block, it's still just a number, so we can treat it as such. We treat it as a block, 2a. So what we would get if we divide each side of our equation by 2a, each side, we get v squared minus u squared, and I'm going to put that in brackets again like last time, divided by 2a equals s, or s equals v squared minus u squared, all divided by 2a.